Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the second Rocket Core weekly tournament of this season of tourneys. I'm Tofu Elliot, and I'm joined tonight by Astral. Astral, how are you doing? I'm good. It's my first time on Rocket Core as well. This is going to be a, an interesting one. I'm glad to be here. A new environment with some some new, new interesting teams that look pretty strong from what I've heard, and uh, I've never seen any of these guys play, so it's going to be a, some really good games, I think. Yep, silly names tonight. We've got Peepoo Peepoo head to head to head with I'll do my best. Uh, and I certainly am hoping that their best is going to be at least entertaining because uh, there's nothing worse than coming onto cast and then seeing a boring sweep. Yeah, I thought you were going to say good enough there. I thought there's some bias coming through already that you weren't happy with the Peepoo P names that you were going <laughs> to jump on supporting the orange side immediately. But. Yeah, they're uh, two different names, I suppose. Not fancying an, an org name, but it, it's good to keep it interesting either way and have some kind of comedy behind the teams. Yeah, absolutely. It is going to be a best of five series as the players get down on the field. We are going to be bringing you this game, Peepoo Peepoo, the team in blue, head to head with I'll Do My Best, the team in orange. And as we get underway, Growly from Team Orange is pushing into the corner. It's going to be down off of the backboard, but Jalen defending it well enough. That 50 with Life Fox actually was enough to turn it upfield. Classy looking for Jalen up the inside. That's a lovely little one, too. The shot is good, and that's a lovely goal from Peepoo Peepoo. Oh, yeah, it was really well worked, wasn't it? The way they moved it upfield as well, it was so quick in the passing play that they made, but they got so close to the goal so quickly. And uh, I'll do my best. Didn't do enough on that occasion. Absolutely no chance of defending that one. What a great start for the blue side. Underway again here as Etexic not able to get a favorable 50, but Classy looking for a team, looking for a double tap off of the backboard there. The flip reset not quite happening. Jalen turning it up, but Growly's met it quickly. It's off of the backboard. It's uncomfortable, but Classy able to do just enough to keep that one wide of the net. Lifox keeping the pressure on. Able to get a 50, but not quite enough. It's all pressure right now from I'll do my best. Unfortunately, it's not quite good enough. At the minute now, and they're under a bit more pressure again. But, you know, we're a minute through into this one already, and there's not been too much for either side. Two shots appear, and uh, I'll do my best creating something nice here. That were lovely double to what a save by Jalen that was to keep the score uh, still in their favor. That was a, a great bit of play coming out from the orange side as soon as you said that uh, they were looking perhaps not quite good enough. What a save indeed. I mean, you kind of get used to, once you've casted enough games, what shots will cause goals and what won't and that one i was i was already moved in onto the one all kickoff i can't believe he saved that absolutely wonderful stuff wonderful positioning from the defender there but it is still i'll do my best in offense that one able to be turned out if that had been on target it would have slipped all the way through to the goal and almost doing so again there classy coming up to finish it off and against the runner play peepoo peepoo have scored their second yeah, compared to the other goals that were going to be scored, this one's a little bit sloppy. It was flicked on by an orange player into his own box, I think completely unintentionally, just wrong place at the wrong time to flick the ball into the middle, and it was a pretty easy finish for Classy in the end. And Disappointing to give away a goal like that after creating so much uh, quality down the other end and to find themselves two goals down now. Probably, like you say, a little bit against the runner play. I think these teams seem very evenly matched from what we've seen in the first two minutes, but it's gone all peepoo's way at the minute. Jalen. Playing it into the orange corner. Oh, a boost that had that I thought was actually bugged there because I thought I saw two players drive through it. But no, not in the end. It wasn't. But Dave dunking on the last man there to bring the deficit down to one. <laughs> yeah, off the ceiling as well. Twisting all the way through the air. The musty as well, I believe that was, as the dunk came down. The goalkeeper did not deal with it at all. As Jalen got his third save, uh, not going to make a difference regardless. And what a comeback. We, we, we nearly saw them score that goal earlier, which would have been a quality one. Great save by Jalen. But finally, uh, they get their breakthrough. Not quite halfway through this game yet. And plenty of time to turn it around, to be honest. Growly uh, struggling on 50 points, but his two teammates doing well. And just as I say, that gets himself up to 162. He's on the scoreboard as well. 2-2. Two -two. Lovely work here. And much more in line with the pressure that we've been seeing coming out from the team in orange over the last couple of minutes a very good way to equalize and they'll be looking to continue pressing 
uh, their offensive advantage. But to be honest with you, their defense has just been so, so messy comparatively. Do you think that that could be their downfall in this series? Yeah, I think so. It's hard to say, isn't it, in the first game, though. You always got to be careful when making too much comment about the first game because we see teams completely turn it around later on in the series. So it's it's hard to put too much on that at the minute. But in terms of saves and shots and statistics wise, it's still really, really even. And the scoreline obviously reflects the same thing. And I think there's going to be tiny little things like perhaps that little mistake at the back of demo. I think we might have just lost Astral momentarily, but what a lovely turn there. A cut inside from Lyfox as he manages to take that one over the last man and confirm the lead for the first time for Team Orange in this game, coming from 2-0 down up to 3-2 now as a Texic stops that one going into the back of the net to become four. Oh, another save there needed from Classy, and he's done very well to keep that one out, Jalen. Popping that one up before he gets boomed away. Lyfox turning that one almost on target. Dave not able to get that one on. Growly keeping the pressure in the corner. Classy trying to play this one out. Jalen getting something over there. The good 50 in the mid is allowing Blues to come up with some pressure here as Dave's touch is awkward. Atexic taking advantage, but Dave is there to turn that one out. And this has actually been a pretty good spell of offense from the team in blue. Yeah, I think I got a little bit too excited when that goal went in. Just lost myself. But anyway, yeah, we're back. And uh, it, it's been an incredible turnaround. You have to say, Blue looked so good from the start of this game in the opening couple of minutes. But Orange have just turned it around so nicely. I'll do my best. And they're certainly doing exactly that, putting more pressure onto Blue. Just looking like they're not done and not happy with that one goal lead that they have at the minute. Obviously, keeping Growly back as well, making sure that they're not overextending too much. But they're creating some good chances. And I like the way this, this team has kind of turned themselves around from that first minute where they where they weren't looking too good. Dave, up for that one, trying to read the backboard, but Classy will get it clear. A Texic not able to get that touch. It looks pretty uncomfortable. Growly will take control, but that's a lovely little challenge there from Classy. Growly can't get that one out. A Texic pushing up for the team in blue here, but it is going to be an orange breakaway as Growly tries to slow things down in the mid. Jalen able to take things off. Oh, and he's robbed the last man and popped that one in for a 30-second left equalizer. Yeah, he didn't think this one was really going to end level, did you, quite, Elliot? Dave, being a little bit too fancy there. I think he just needed to get the ball away, resting on his laurels, not thinking that Jalen was going to slot that one in, but he did. We're back level again with 28 seconds, like you say. And I honestly can't predict this one. I think it's been so back and forth with goals pinging in from either side. It's going to be one little mistake, I think, to make the difference and decide this game. And that could be it. Jalen gets across with another huge save. His fifth of the game, actually, really coming up clutch in the defense for Pipu Pipu at the minute. But uh, I don't know which way this one's going to go, Elliot. Any thoughts? It looks, honestly, like, I think if I had to guess based on offense, I think it would have to go to I'll do my best. The team in orange just looking a lot more predatory going forward but their defense has been such a mixed bag at times a real shambles that it could very very easily go in blue's favor and i i just i can't put a winner on this just yet yeah and jalen as well at the back so solid and just as you called it it's a quick counter for i'll do my best there's nobody home for the orange side as classy just plays it upfield finds his teammate dave not back in time and and again this this orange defense get caught out just just as you were talking about yeah, well, I mean, like, they've just been making the same mistakes all game long. And I think this is where you start to see the better teams shine. You know, it's it's the adaptability. They, they must know that they've conceded almost every goal in this game from their complete lack of defensive stability, right? That their rotation has been non-existent for the most part. And if they're clearly a very good team, you know, so if they can turn this thing around, if they can start just getting a little bit more structure in the back line, then in my opinion, I don't think they'll have much trouble turning this series around and, and actually taking it. But if they can't, then we're just going to see counter after counter. Yeah, it seems like they've only got one place out of them, isn't it, which we talk about with just their attacks, just getting forward, putting pressure on all the time. And it seems like, like we say, that the defense has not been the most solid, but it seems like that's because that's not where they're comfortable. You know, they, they play with this high pressure, high attacking to make sure that they never lose pressure in a, in a bad situation where they have to defend. But obviously they're against a really quality side here, um, like Peepoo Peepoo. And uh, they, they've showed showed something different and put them 
put them under some pressure, which perhaps they're not expecting, and it's caught them out time and time again. And I think they've got to try and change their play style a little bit, and maybe it might be out of their comfort zone. But if they keep throwing everything forward, like you say, they're going to keep getting caught on the counter. Well, let's see if they can learn from their mistakes as we get underway with game number two. Peepoo, peepoo, the team in blue. Head to head with I'll do my best, the team in orange. The team in blue currently up by one game to nil in this best of five quarterfinal series here for the Rocket Core Weekly. Lyfox will take control, but that's a poor touch, and he's very lucky. Classy didn't bang that one straight into the back of the net. Jalen turning in midfield to pop that one onto the backboard. Lyfox reading it well, but passing it straight back out to a man in blue. Etexic getting a very awkward double there. It's read well by his teammate, but it is cleared out effectively. Growly not able to find the touch with that quick turn back inside. Lyfox getting a 50 there, but only managing to bump the player in the end. And Blue do manage to get something downfield. It does appear to me that Orange are actually rotating a little bit better in defense, although they haven't had too much pressure applied yet. And we haven't been able to see what they do to deal with counter attacks for the moment but uh, i did see a little bit of a uh, full team rotation there do you think that uh have you spotted anything astral definitely i have to agree with you a little bit i think they like you say they were under complete pressure for the first 30 seconds but growlies had to rush back to cover off but he was there quicker than perhaps he would have been in the last game and so we have to take note of that but yeah like we say before then they were under pressure and didn't really get anything upfield but I think it, it's all about that third man, how quickly that third man gets back, how early they decide to get back, whether they decide that committing for a goal is more important. You know, perhaps in the last game that they were they were two goals down and that's why they wanted to commit more players forward to try and turn things around. But they don't need to do so here, you know, it's it's nil nil. They can they can play a slower game, they're not gonna risk throwing all three men forward. But yeah, we'll have to keep an eye on that third man for this orange side and see how uh, how they rotate. Dave getting a block in mid there as Classy's pass to Jalen is pretty decent there but not able to pull that one off classy keeping the pressure on growly getting a touch out to dave on the right hand side demolished rapidly by classy as he gets back to defend the blue net life fox gonna have to scramble back here the recovery is not the best dave coming through to clear things up into blue territory here as growly takes over in the midfield up in the mid life fox 15 with Jalen. It's going to go all the way over to the other side ball as a Texic plays it past one of the orange men. Dave able to get that one all the way over the top. It's off of the backboard. It's free for Lyfox to shoot. And that is going to be the opening goal of this game after nearly two and a half minutes. Yeah, orange make their pressure counter. Double commit coming out from the blue side. Both players going up for the backboard. Neither of them getting it as well just for good measure. And nobody getting a save on the follow up either. And it was made a little bit too easy, to be honest, for the Orange team. They just pinged it up onto that backboard. You'd expect t teams of this quality to deal with that much, much easier than they did. And kind of a free shot, which we don't really expect from this blue side. Normally, they're better at getting it away, especially Jalen, but not this time around. And they're soaking up more pressure once again now as Orange continuing to put their foot on the gas. But will they get caught on the counter? Classy looking for a flick, doesn't find it. Jalen is up quickly behind him to turn on it, but Dave... Now moving forward to receive a pass from Lyfox. He's positioned well, but that pass is a little bit too slow. Cut out effectively by Team Blue, who will now break away on the counter-attack. It's uh, They're there, though. They're actually there. Team Orange is there to deal with the counter-attack, and it seems as though, perhaps at the expense of their rapidly offensive aggression uh, going forward, they have seemed to shore up their defense a little bit. Yeah, couldn't agree more. And again, they get a second one as Growly taps it in on the front post, beating out the blue defenders quite a, by quite a margin, actually. And Dave with a lovely bit of play to get it over to him for that to create that goal. But yeah, like we were saying, I think I think that is exactly the case. They don't need to be this crazy offense. If they know that the blue have got a solid defense, they've they just got to play a little bit slower. I'll do my best and just work their way in. They will create chances, but they've just not got to rush things. And, and they're doing such a better job here of being careful at the back again there's somebody there to get the ball away and carry it downfield towards the blue goal and they're looking so much more organized in this game so much more calculated and at the minute blue have not really showed much to to prove that they're worthy in this game growly taking that one up the side wall the bounce is good awkward for jalen though who's now left all the way forward doesn't manage to get that canister either and will have to get back now if he wants to find boost just hexics up for the shot Lyfox turning that one away growly 
taking possession, but will be bumped off by Jalen, allowing classes to come up and take it. But Dave has beaten them both to the ball. Brought two players up for that one in defense, but it's not able to make it work. It's still awkward for Team Blue, though, as Growly now gets back and Dave takes over the offense. A minute left to play here, and to be honest with you, Blue's really not looking like the team they were last game. No, and one key thing I noticed with Peepoo Peepoo, it, it, it's just their defense. So they keep over committing. It's, it's two players seemingly double committing for the same save. There's no trust to the back. And again, you can see why as Dave just sent it flying into the top corner to give the Orange a 3-0 lead. But it's these constant double commits at the back for the two players. Again, Jalen and Classy looking to go for the same ball and then both fake challenging it and leaving it. And nobody putting the ball under any kind of pressure. And I, I think they've just lost a bit of confidence and communication in each other. But... Nobody seems to be dealing with the ball properly, and there's too many double commits. Classy, trying to take this out of his corner, but the 50 does not work in his favor. And Crowley looking for a very aggressive pass to a pre-jumped Dave in the middle. It's not actually overcommitted them, though, as Crowley and Dave are both back in time, and now are able to re-establish their pressure moving forwards. Lyfox now taking this one into the corner, and with 18 seconds left, Barring a miracle, that is going to be the end of game two to bring this one all square in the series overall. And to be honest with you, this is exactly what I was talking about in the uh, in the uh, in between series after getting number one, just as Dave puts in goal number four, his second goal of game number two. And what I said was that if they managed to shore up their defense, then I'll do my best. Team Orange were not going to have any trouble dispatching the team in blue and it, that is, seems to be what has come to pass here is they haven't conceded a single goal and they i mean team in blue just don't look like they know what to do about it no we did exactly uh, sorry they did exactly what we asked of them and they, they switched up their play style brilliantly you know they still got eight shots on the board which is a lot but not as many as last game so uh, that is interesting four saves as well but across the board for every, one for every single player at least and it was just a, a much, much better performance. You know, Jalen went from, from five saves, I believe, in last, last game to one. There was just a little challenge in the defense from the blue side, just soaking up pressure for far too long, not dealing with things quick enough. And I don't know if it was the, the Orange's play style that just caught them off guard or if they just had a really rough game. But it kind of sent, like, from my point of view, at least, that it, it was it was a bit of both. You know, Orange seemed to turn their, thing, to turn their attitude around and Blue seemed to do quite the opposite and just crumble under pressure. So what do you think that the blue team have to do now if they're going to re-establish their lead in this series? It sounds strange, but I think they've got to do more of what Orange did in the first one. I think they've got to start getting the ball upfield and putting more pressure on because they were just sitting back for far, far too long. The double commits were coming out because nobody was pressing the ball quick enough and just giving I'll do my best far too much time. And we've seen how dangerous they can be when they're given that time. They, they can't allow these ball, balls to be pinged onto the backboard and tapped down like we've seen in previous matches and they've got to start putting some pressure in the other half because eventually if you soak up that pressure you're going to concede and we didn't see enough of them going forward at all well I'm just waiting on one of the players to rejoin perhaps having a little bit of a connection issue but we are all underway here currently as we get Going with game number three, all square in this best of five quarter final, but it's early pressure here from Team Orange as Dave puts that one off of the backboard again. A Texic able to take it out, but only as far as Lyfox, who looks to bang it off of the backboard. Classy defending it well, and a Texic finding a demolition on the Orange second man to cut out the pressure very effectively. A demo paid back immediately by Growly, though, taking a Texic off of the field and putting the blue team under more pressure Jalen coming off of the side wall Live Fox missing uncharacteristically there and that demolition is going to leave the orange net open and classy putting his team in front and scoring a goal for the first time since game number one yeah we said we wanted offensive pressure that was not exactly what I was expecting a long ball all the way down the midfield and contested but that's what these disruption plays do and it's good to see them switching things up it doesn't matter how it goes in as long as it hits the back of the net and they've done so here they've got the first goal that's got to be a confidence booster for this blue side Growly putting that one into the corner Dave looks to Growly again with a little pass back and forth these passes are a little bit too lateral though not able to get anything in front of the net Dave will take control tries to slow things down a little bit but is bumped off of it by Classy blue team 
trying to break down field now, getting on the counter attack that worked so effectively for them in game number one. A demolition there on Growly is going to leave him a bit overexposed at the back, but that's a lovely touch by Lifox to put Dave back in possession. It's going to be blocked effectively by Classy, but goodness me, what a touch that was. Growly to Lifox. That's a lovely touchdown. Dave can't put it in. Classy, absolutely superb save to keep that one out. And Blues hanging on by the skin of their teeth here as they finally managed to get themselves some breathing room. Yeah, hanging on, but still got that clean sheet. And this is the defense we talked about as the save gets cleared once again that we saw in the first game where the, where the blue defense just looked unbreakable at times. Obviously, they did concede quite a few goals in the end, but they looked so much more solid and they're doing so again here as Classy drops it down and just like that, the quick counter-attack up the other end. It's slammed in by Classy and it's 2-0 to Peepoo Peepoo. Absolutely lovely goal here. Classy, all the confidence in the world going up for that. Soon as the ball's hit, long before it bounces off of the corner and thoroughly beats the last man to the ball and with an angle perfect to slot that one home into the top corner of the net just over three minutes left here in game number three as dave equalizes with that touch off at the ceiling and brings the deficit down to one dave looks so dangerous in the air we saw in the last game and the one before just slamming things down dunks it down again makes the save impossible for Jalen as he brute forces it through that esl monthly elite title showing what he's worth at the moment and they're not out of it just yet. It seems back and forth in this series, like ping pong at the minute. And Blue started to come out firing. And once again, we're seeing a bit of orange come to life after two minutes. And I think they're not out of this one just yet. They've got more shots on the board than Blue. The pressure will start coming. And I think they'll get another goal. And they're going to get one right here as Dave gets his second pretty quickly after the first. Another slam down and dunked in for 2-2. Dave just looks... I mean, look at this, just up in time. The angle's good. He plays it off at the last man. There's no hope for the man on the line to clear that one out. And the equalizer is going to come as quite the momentum breaker for the team in blue, who were 2-0 up just moments ago. And that is actually how things happened in game number one. Blues were two goals up, and then the Oranges brought it back to 3-2 before eventually going on to lose 4-3. So I don't think Blues will be too unhappy if things repeat themselves as long as they go all the way to the end. But that is almost the 3-2 lead there. Growly's shot turned away by... Uh, I'm actually not sure in the end. Jalen, I think, but it's a lovely save nonetheless. We are receiving word that Classy has disconnected from the Discord, so perhaps some communication issues for the team in blue, but they're going to have to make do for the time being as Classy plays this one out of the corner. Jalen taking up the mantle after that one gets turned back into blue territory, but Growly is keeping the pressure on well. It's a lovely pass down. Dave, so threatening in the air, looking to follow this one up and off of the backboard, but no such luck. Lifebox keeping the pressure up. It's off of the backboard again. Jalen and Atexic both up for it. Jalen making sure to hit it, otherwise that would have left them very, very vulnerable. Jalen playing it out of the corner, looking to take control on the ground, but Growly closes it down, and it's honestly such, such good pressure from the team in orange, who do seem to have found themselves a little bit again in the second half of game number three. They've got a lovely rhythm coming into this game as it's developed, and uh, one thing to notice as well, since the Blues scored their first two goals, they've actually not registered a shot. They've only got two shots on target, and obviously... That came very early into this game. Since then, they've been eating pressure for the last few minutes, not managing to concede again, which is just good for them, of course. But, you know, if they're not going to create anything up the other end, they're eventually going to lose out anyway. So a pass comes across, and they're just under so much pressure to get the ball out of their own half. They just managed it in the last 20 seconds or so for the first time in a few minutes. And again, Dave puts it back into the blue half. They've got to try and do something to deal with this pressure, but it's not looking good for the blue side. Growley's up. He'll look to touch it again, but can't quite get the double. That one's off the backboard by Dave. Lifox putting it up very, very hard. Drops it down using his wheels and will find the wave dash reset on the ground to help speed him up. But with no boost, he is going to have to scramble back in defense. Growly getting the touch up. Jalen defending it well enough, but Lifox's shot is very uncomfortable for Classy, who has to squeeze that one out from the crossbar. That pinch going a bit further than I think he intended there. Growly chasing it up, but Classy's clear. We'll put the orange team under some pressure here as everything's square with 17 seconds left to play. Growly up into the air, passing it out. Atexic cutting it out well. Jalen dodging in the corner when he meant to double jump. Lifebox getting a save 
playing this one out to the side. It's down off of the ceiling in the middle. Dave missing his touch, but the fake will work either way. Atexic choosing not to drop it in the corner, but the orange man will. And we are going to overtime in game number three. Yeah, it's good to see a really competitive one in this one. And although Blue have not struggled to create chances uh, since the start of the game, they're, they're looking solid defensively, it has to be said, for, for quite some time. And they might get a counter-attack goal here straight at Dave. Unfortunately, that was the one place that they didn't want to shoot the uh, shoot the shot. But they're putting out some pressure now, and they, they do seem to have changed a bit of mentality since this, uh, since this overtime started. But it's whether they can keep the ball up in that half, because at the minute, my money's still on orange. They still look like they've got the, the higher quality in their attack, and... It's, it's seemingly showing, but we'll, we'll see if Blue can hold on for a counter. It's not looking likely. It's off the post and in. And of course, once again, Orange make it count. Their offense is just too much to deal with. And they get another goal and see this game out 3-2. to two. Yeah, lovely, lovely work there from Orange. It's actually for the first time in a long time, it's Orange scoring on the counter attack, taking a leaf out of Blue's book from game number one and doing what it takes here in overtime in game three to confirm the win and put them ahead in the series two games to one and they're now on series point i think deservedly as well 12 shots to five more than double the shots coming out from the orange so much pressure and we talk about obviously you got to get those shots in and make it count they they nearly didn't make it count but they got it over the line in the end one extra goal for all those shots is not ideal in terms of shooting percentage but nevertheless they got the victory, and like you said, that's what counts on series point. We do have word that Classy is now back, his connection issues with Discord sorted out. Both of the goals from Blues scored by him in that last game, and he ending up as the highest scoring player on their team. Do you think that that had much to do with it, or do you think that teams of this caliber should be prepared to play with no voice comms at any moment? I think they should, but whether they, whether they are is a different story. I mean, you hope that these things don't break and you have to kind of be prepared for the worst, but you know, you're not going to purposely try and practice without comms. You want to spend that precious practice time communicating as much as possible. And I mean, it could have made a difference. They, they definitely were under a lot of pressure and it didn't look too bad. Um, in terms of their communication, I didn't see as many double commits as I did earlier in the series. That's for sure. But you know, defensively they were, they were struggling to get the ball out and it could have had an effect. Absolutely. But we'll, we'll never actually know unless, they turn out something crazy in this game and uh, put the pressure back on Orange. We'll have to see. Well, we are going to be underway with game number four. Orange team on series point as Dave gets a demo on Classy. Lifox playing this one up. That's not going to hit the ceiling. Dave reads it perfectly. Classy reads his shot even better, though, and is able to keep that one out. Lifox are not able to find the target with that, and Blues drawing a sigh of relief but they don't have room to breathe here as davis keeping the pressure on growly harassing classy in the net as he now seeks to get this one over the top as hexic jumping up jalen having to back out of his as they went to double commit jalen's touch absolutely necessary there but dave turning and flicking that one over the top it's almost lovely life fox's double commit leaves him a little bit vulnerable at the back but growly's pressure guy buys him enough time that life fox can get back and is now playing this one into the blue corner as he tries to guide it around in front of net. Dave will look for the shot. Nothing happening yet, but this is some very, very good pressure from what is turning into a very consistent orange side. Indeed, I was just going to say, actually, that I don't think the comms have made too much of a difference regardless of that orange have still had all the pressure, not managed to score, only two shots on target, which I should say, but nevertheless, all the pressure for them at the moment and Classy once again under pressure. From the orange but he does well to get it away actually in a 1v1 because dave can't catch up but he's going to take it out wide and try and find something in the middle but yeah i think i think that uh, the blues have got to try and start doing exactly what classy did you know if they can't get it out as a team try and dribble try and put some uh, some fancy plays of your own and try and show some individual ability to get the ball out and try and take players on maybe if you start running at these orange players it might catch them off guard because at the minute we're seeing a lot of passing plays between these teams and i think we're we're not used to seeing too many solo plays and dribbles at the minute. Jalen waiting in the corner gets a touch. It's a little bit heavy and now Orange are going to take advantage and who else was it going to be but Dave putting that one in for a lead with three minutes left on the clock. Yeah, Dave is a real poacher sat in the box once again slams it home. He's always in the right place at the right time, isn't he? Just to slam the ball in, dunk it down over the keeper wherever the goalie may be. He's there to beat them just in time and get it into the back of the net. He's done so again here halfway through and it is deserved. They've had more pressure. 
they've made their chance count on the third shot and uh, deservedly in the lead here, Orange team. Oh, lovely play there from Blue. Unfortunate not to get a goal. Growly doing well enough, positioned in the right spot on the line to turn that one out. And it is going to be Orange pressure now, even with a man down. Life Fox is with there though, will leave him a little bit vulnerable as a Texic plays up the right hand side, stays slow, keeps control, tries to pass it across, Dave cuts it out well, that touch up is going to be met by Jalen, that 50's worked out very nicely for Blue, Growly trying to play this one off of his backboard, does so pretty well, a Texic not able to get there, Classy also unable, Jalen following it up and playing it off of the side wall, but it is going to be clear for Orange, a Texic doing enough, but it is going to end up in a pass to Life Fox unless they can get this one out, Round the corner, Jalen trying to pinch that one between him and the ceiling, but with no boost now, it's going to be three against one at the back and Growly fakes a Texic at the front post. It's a 2-0 lead to Orange and with two minutes left, the blue team have a mountain to climb. Yeah, the Orange, they're, they're just critical. They're, they're clinical when it counts. They make the difference. They, they just got that little bit of attacking edge that the Blues just don't seem to have that killer instinct perhaps that Blues are missing just to get the job done when it matters most and Growly and Dave just seem to have that little bit of an edge just to slam it home and not be affected by the opposition no matter where they are and just put the ball in the net and, it, and it's something that Blues are missing they seem overall like quite a defensive side I don't know if that's because they're perhaps lower on ability in general or or if that's uh, just the way they play but it seems like they're really attacking uh, missing somebody that's sort of an attacking player sitting up the top of the field and creating some real danger for them because at the minute it's just not happening and they're soaking up pressure for far far too long and uh, suddenly orange will get a goal once again and they've got to do more and with just over a minute left it's not looking like they're going to get back into this one the Texic looking to go for a dribble play and does find a little bit of space in the corner can't quite take that one round growly on the wall but Jalen now looking to spot the gap there, but can't hit the target. Classy looking to slot it into the corner and does so perfectly. And with a minute left to play, this could be the momentum shift that they needed. Yeah, lovely casters curse from me as well, saying they didn't know when they get back into it. They score immediately. Classy again, I think he has been the main goal scorer for Peepoo Peepoo. But nevertheless, it's not been quite enough in the series with the, only taking one game so far. They've got another minute to turn this one around. But... I'm not sure they can do it, but every time I doubt them, they seem to get a goal back and uh, try and prove me wrong. So maybe they've got something else up their sleeve, but if Orange keep the pressure up that we've seen them have and just keep it pinned in that blue hearth for another 30 or 40 seconds, it won't be likely that they'll get a goal. Dave, looking to keep the pressure on, does so effectively. There's no one back for Orange and Growly is going to re-establish that two goal buffer. Yeah, Blue over committing massively. I think they knew they needed to try and get a goal, but that was not how they wanted the outcome to turn out and that might be a little bit too much for them to catch up now blue team i think they're gonna have even bigger mountain to climb at this stage it's looking more like everest was 35 seconds to go and i would not be betting on them right now dave up in front of net classy able to stop that one becoming a threat but life fox will keep control 25 seconds left on the clock as that one almost makes it all the way through dave cutting it out on the line Passing it up to Growly in midfield, but a Texic will find the touch. Classy now going to have to drive this one home very, very quickly, but can't. And now failing that goal, this game is over. The series is over. Life Fox playing it down into the mid as the clock strikes zero. We are going to see, I'll do my best, the team in orange winning game number four, winning the series three games to one and moving on to the semifinals. Yeah, well deserved as well. You got to say nine shots again, and nicely even across the board, three shots for all players on that team. Everyone making a good contribution. Of course, you got to give a shout out to Dave who takes the MVP once again. He was the main goal scoring threat for I'll do my best. But they look like a dangerous team, and they they didn't dominate uh, Peepoo Peepoo by any, by any stretch. But you know they they just had that bit of edge going forward that blue team were missing. Absolutely, and I'm, I'll do my best. Looking very, very strong if they can continue this. I think they are uh, strong candidates for the victory this week. I mean, we've not seen the rest of the teams play, have we? So it's, it's hard to say, but I mean, they, they look really, really solid. It has to be said. They play well as a team. They have a few weaknesses. Like we said, their defense at times can be a little bit shaky, but if they can be more consistent and iron that out in uh, in more of the games in the, in the late later uh, series of this tournament, then uh, they've definitely got a chance of doing so, absolutely. 
Well, that is going to be it from the quarterfinals. We will be back shortly to bring you all of the action from the semis and from the finals of this week's Rocket Core Weekly. But that is going to be the end of my casting and Astral's tonight. You will be brought the action by Gavastrian and Mikey, the pair that brought you last week's Rocket Core Weekly, a uh, fan favorite for good reason. Astral, how have you enjoyed it tonight? It's been good. Yeah, it's been a great quality game, actually. I really enjoyed it. It's two, uh, two very strong teams and kind of interesting to break down the, the competition of the two sides and how they were playing their strategies in the game. But I think we have to say the better team prevailed. But yeah, it's been great. Thank you for having me. No problem at all. Thank you for joining me. That's going to be it from us, guys. But don't go anywhere because there will be two more series left to play right after this short break.
Found a way into my heart. Oh, oh, she don't make up, no, she make art. And I need a way to tease. Hello and welcome, everybody. We are back with the Rocket Core Weekly. We have another great game. I'm Gravaskin, and I'm the guy behind the buttons now, also here talking to you guys. And I'm joined here by the one, the Z only, Mikey. Welcome. Hello, how are you doing, sir? How is your day? How is life? I feel like it's been forever since I've casted with you, even though it's only been like a week. <laughs> it's been a week at yeah, it's been a week at best because last week we were here as well, and we're going to be doing it again. And I'm super hyped for all of it. It's going to be awesome. So we have a bit of a um, a price pool now, luckily. So the players are playing for at least ten euros each, I believe. So that's going to be fun. I love the fact that we have that. It's going to be good. And what teams do we have on the docket today? So we've got Dutchies Esport versus Smasher Dutchies Esport, consisting of Tampori, Flusrez, and Nox, and Smashers is Bird Ant-Man. And I'm probably going to butcher this, but I'm going to go with it anyway. I'm going to go with Exegi. That is just what I'm going with. If it's wrong, I apologize. But can we just get some 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 better names to pronounce? Exegi, who comes up with this? I would just go for XG. I, 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 I just make it easier. It's lay, it's lamer, but it's easier. And we're the casters. We get to decide that we make things easier, right? That's how that works, Absolutely. right? We just yeah. changed. We just changed the rules. We don't care. We'll do it. Yeah. So we got that. This is good. Um. Yeah. So we're in here for all of it. Sorry for being a bit brainy everywhere and going all over the place. I'm, I've been doing a lot of things and multitasking is not my best thing but what is one of the best things is that we got the teams in here now we're gonna get ready let's do this are we ready to fumble absolutely a fumble i don't think we're gonna fumble but the kickoff comes in ant is gonna get the block right there it's gonna come off of the wall is x xg xg i'm probably gonna flux between what i pronounce him tonight 
Antler's going to go in the air. He's going to go for a bit of mechanical play. Knocks it with a fairly easy block. Sampori's going to hit it downfield. Try and get it off the backboard. But he's just there to get that block fairly easily. Going to feather his boost. Running out of boost, though he is. And Knox just steals it fairly simply. Sending it right back downfield, right towards that goal. And the block is there again. Sampori's going to send it in to the middle. But Bird with the clearance. Well, 30 seconds to go. What are your thoughts so far? Um, it's a Rocket League match. It's looking kind of decent. I like the way Tempori is playing a lot. Keeping control of the ball, mostly by playing it to corners where there's not a lot of defenders and that way keeping control of the ball just a little bit longer. So I think blue team looking pretty decent right now, but I'm not completely sure if they can keep this up. Of course, it's Dutch eSports, so there might be a bias there, but Smashers, Smashers don't look bad. Smashers not looking bad at all. As the demo comes in from... Bird on Knox. Dutch's eSport on the attack right here. I'm just going to go for it. He's going to get the touch. Knox is going to be there. But the clear comes in from Bird again. A touch from Antma sends it downfield. It's sat in the corner right now. Just just <laughs> stopped against the ceiling. But Exeg is just going to block it again. Three minutes, 30 seconds on the clock. Comes back in. The bouncer into the center. Knox is there to block it again. And that rotation is very important in this game. Yeah, a bit of a weird touch there it makes it a lot easier for Dutchies Esports to go on the attack to try and look for something more. But it gets stifled really quickly as well. So I'm I'm not really sure either team is already looking specifically for anything. And Bertie, we have seen before, Bertie, a very mechanically gifted player, um, was playing with a very insane team before this, I believe. I'm now seeing them with another team, so apparently he was not picked up. But let's see if he can do it well with this team as well, because... I ain't individually skilled. He definitely is. Individual skill is very important in this game, but it is Rocket League and it is a team game, which means everybody needs to be on fire. The, the pass comes in from Flux. He's going to try and follow it up, but Antma gets a fairly easy block. It's just sent downfield again. The setup comes in. Bird is going to completely block that. Flux just comes in. The pass comes in. Knox is going to bounce off the backboard. He is there to get the dunk. The save comes in from Antma. It is still there. Tempura is keeping it there. He gets a double touch on it. The dunk comes in. Flutter sends it home. And Dutchies Esports take the lead in this first game. Yeah, a bit of a slowness there in the defense for Smashers. They wanted to go for it. Birdsey kind of cutting rotation, making a desperation attempt to block the shot. But because of it, was not in the right position. And the other two players were just... Kind of gaping there like two baby birds looking at it at their mother being hoping to be fed and just didn't really do anything for the defense either bit of a mess but maybe they can make still make it come back a comeback oh. is always on the cards the flick comes in from Knox, but ant-man just keeps up with him oh the shot comes in again just blocks fairly easily plus he's gonna send it back to the middle but there's too many people there and if you are the roster of smashers you have got to do something. You've got to get out of that area. And Dutchies Esports, they'll be trying to get some demo plays maybe potentially later on in the game to try and break down that defense. The shot comes in from Knox, but a great save again. And there is always somebody in that net. You have to do something to disrupt that play. Yeah, they need to disrupt something to, to do for that play, of course, with maybe bumps or demos. But they, if they can keep up pressure like this, they're just waiting for another mistake. We saw a mistake already. So it's just waiting for another one. And... I'm not sure if it's really necessary to take risky rotations to look for bumps and demos just yet, but if you can do it without taking that risk, I think it'll be there worthwhile for Dutchies Esports. And for Smashers, they just need to get the ball away and then to a player, like a good pass here to Birdsey. Oh. Oh. <laughs> not too sure what happened then, but... And a great attempt at a shot right there. And a great save, equally as much. Tampere is just going to get a boomer, send it downfield. Antma's going to get the deflection into the corner. Antma, nine boost. Picks up a small boost. He is going to be there. He sends it into the middle. And it looked oh. like he blocked his own shot there. How did that not go in? So it was almost... It, it, it was an own goal block. And then it was an almost own goal as well. The other way going. So I, I'm not sure. I think we got robbed there from a goal. But eventually, Fluss looks to the fluster of, of all the people... Gets through it and wrecks the defense here, getting that goal. Counter attack is so vital when you've got the, the rotation not on point a little bit there. And when you've got the play, go for it. And that is what they have gone from it. And they are 2-0 up in this game. 
30 seconds on the clock. Do you think Smashers are going to be able to answer back? They are starting to look a bit more threatening because they're passing into offense and Birdsey really trying to do his best, but it's these, ki these kind of defensive rotations that are not going well enough, which are costing them a lot of goals. They move up two players to get a bit of a hit and run passing play going, and the third man decides to move up as well, expecting everything to go so well that he can start defending from midfield. But if you do not stay far enough back, if you see two players move up, it's not going to be like it's not always going to be good enough. So. Dutchies Esports is just looking extremely strong right now. Dutchies Esports, three goal, two nil in game one. Five seconds on the clock as the little pass comes in there. The block comes in from Exegi. The dunk is there, but it is off target. And Dutchies Esports will take game number one by a score of three to nil. Yeah, a decent score indeed for that win for Dutchies Esports. I think... It was kind of obvious that they were going to be winning it because Smasher was just not able to get out of their half well, well enough. They tried to push up, they tried to move in, but every single time they gave the ball away a little bit too quickly and then Smashers just came in and said, well, you know what, we'll just give this one away once again and Dutchies are like, thank you. We'll hit that in and uh, move on from there, getting those three goals. But one good chance from Smashers up till now. Maybe they can create more. Yeah, the interesting thing to see is you can see on both on both teams, Smashers had six shots. Dutchies Esports also had six shots. So across the board, there were opportunities there. Dutchies Esports clearly having the better finishing, though, and able to break down that defense. And eventually, you know, they do take that victory. They do take that victory indeed. I felt like they were knocking on the door the entire time, just making sure they could get through whenever like the curtain fell just a little bit. They were basically playing the Jehovah Witness offense. Just keep knocking and then trying to put a foot in the door at any point they saw a small crack happening. But a quick counterattack almost goes in for Ant-Man. That was very, very quickly right there. Off the kickoff, the pass comes in again, but Nox is going to get that block. And it's very quick in the beginning of this game. So the block comes in, the pass into the center. Doesn't exactly get into the center, though. Looks like he's going to send it into the middle, but Bird able to get a fairly easy clearance. It's going to be sent back now by Nox. Fairly patiently just waiting for it. Not able to do anything with it, and it seems like Smashers just gave up on that little opportunity there and just let that go. Uh, let go of possession. To the opposition you can't do that as the shot comes in from tampori and at the moment the pressure is on the pressure is still on it, it seems like we haven't changed anything from last uh from last game the adaptation here for smash is just not fully formed yet and i feel like it's I see Birdsey playing so well like defensively and offensively rotating very solidly it's it's teammates that are like they're Rotation is there, but it's always a bit stilted. It's always a bit slower. Not really always in the right position here. At my see as well, just a hit forward that really doesn't go anywhere because of positional kind of mistakes. And Birdsey's the one who has to clean up that shot again. So overall, Birdsey working hard. His teammates need to step up a little bit. You have to have all teammates performing really well if you want anything out of it. You can always have one star player, as we see so many times. But at the end of the day, it is a team game. If you have two players not up to scratch, then unfortunately, it's less and less likely that you will take a victory. And they need to get that step up now. As Flip's Rest just bounced it against the wall. Bird's going to come in with another clearance. But Nox is there to catch it. A fairly awkward catch, but it looked like a pass back to Tampuri. Tampuri's going to try and send it to the middle. XG is just there to get that block. And Bird now. Bird is going to try and carry it a little bit. But Nox is just there to stop it once again. Pass comes into the center, but a fairly easy clearance. And Bird is now going to go on the offense. The ground pinch comes in, but Flusrez able to catch that. Two minutes 50 on the clock. What way do we see game two going? Any which way the wind blows as i look at the way they are playing there's finally starting to be a bit more attacks and a bit more chances there for smashers dutchies esports still looking as solid at all as always but with their rotation being this tight a single mistake could really make things crumble if they do not follow up on their uh, on their movements well enough and now if we can get some good attacks going we could make a good chance and here's one of them Ooh. bouncing off and getting in eventually birdsey finishing that one off and it's a good start for smashers this game yeah, let's just watch this again. Antmet just gets a fairly good control. The block tried to come in, but all three players 
sat in the net just watching it go left, right, and center. And the shot comes in from Smashes. Smashes pushes that away. And Smashes, they haven't necessarily been the, been the better side this game. So that was that was kind of surprising that they just let that go in like that. Kind of was surprising that they just didn't, they weren't able to really get, um, yeah, they didn't really get a right rotation in on there. I think it was mostly a a a mistake on on the offensive rotation where you just fell apart. The counter attack came in quick, and the end was there real quick for Dutchies. But they still have a chance. They're giving up a lot of. They usually have a lot of pressure, so they're going to create a lot more chances. I feel. Yeah, the demo comes in from Plus on Bird, and the counter attack is back on for Dutchies Esports. Tempori bends it against the wall. Birdsey is there to just send it back downfield, though. Flusterez catches it with ease. He's going to bounce it off the wall. Go for it again, but Tempori is going to hit it forward. He goes for a second touch, unable to hit that second touch. And now the setup comes in. Knocks just a little bit wide, and he will be very disappointed at that. And that rotation was completely awful there. Where was the defense? The net just left wide open. You can't du do that. Dutch is clumping up a bit too much. In the in the back right corner for the Orange team, there were two Dutch Esports players. Both of them, one, one after the other, kind of wanting to go for the ball. And when they got touches on the ball to pass it to each other, the passes were very short. So still, you're not creating a lot of space for your team if you do that. But now the counter attack seems to be coming, seeing if they can finish that one off. It drops down and eventually gets kerfuffled in. But Tampori getting the goal on his name. The goal is that, and you know, we saw, we saw it a little bit there with the demo, you know, just taking someone out of play, messing it up a little bit. And it still took a little bit for that goal to go in. But Dutchies Esport, one minute and one second on the clock. They're going to be aiming to mount a comeback as they just lose that kickoff emphatically. But still there. Anything can happen in Rocket League. 52 seconds to go. As Antma just catches that fairly easily. He's going to try and send it back to the middle. Nox is going to catch it fairly easily and get the block. Coming off the wall, though, and coming off the backboard. But Flusrez is going to get that block and just get the clearance fairly easily. Tampori follows it up fairly well. And it's interesting. You have to be able to follow these, these little plays up, these little passes, the little shots. You have to follow them up quickly because if you don't, somebody else will. True, and you're going to give away uh, rotation very quickly. And the quick passing plates, if you can get them short and then get them powerful, still having a player moving up, it's once again very risky. But mistakes are happening for the Dutch Esports side. They do get a block where it's very necessary, but overall, Dutch Esports a little bit, a little bit less on the ball here. I think they should get their frequent elbow just out and get that power. If they aren't subscribed to the Rocket Band Lux thing, then they are just not doing it well as Dutchies. I gotta say, a bit disappointing with Smashers. I mean, Birdsey, you see him play and they can make it work. Yeah, but Smashers right there taking the victory to, to one. And, you know, Smashers, they, they pretty much dominated a lot of that game. In the beginning of that game, Dutchies Esports, you know, they really showed that they can do it. They, you know, they showed it in the last game. They came out of this one. They got taken a bit surprised by the kickoff. But then after that, there was a solid 30 seconds or so where they were actually performing really well together. And then it just seemed to fall apart from there. They weren't taking their chances. Uh, they all just... It was almost like they were just stuck in one area and they were really struggling. They were relying on that counter-attack a little bit too much. And unfortunately, when you do that, it, it's hard to break down that defense. And it does result in a lack of goals and a lack of opportunity. We're all even in this series. Yeah, I, I feel like the way they were playing uh, the first game, they were very spread out. They were doing exactly what their coach told them and following up on each other's touches very well without getting in, into in each other's ways. But then we saw double commits starting to happen, a couple of mistakes starting to happen. That just fell off. As you said, demos were going to have to be needed to get through the defense because on the other side, Smasher's defense have looked a lot better now as well. Yeah, Smasher's defense has definitely improved right there. It just gets bounced off there. Nox is there to get the block, but doesn't do anything with it. The shot comes in from XG. And how did that not go in? A little bit off target. The angle was a little bit messy and results in it nothing but a clearance right there. Pass comes into the side. It's back in the center now. Knox with the clearance, but Bird is there to stop it again. 
and it seems that Dutchies Esports, they are just trapped in their area, and Bird will slot that home of a great pass from Antma, and it is 1-0 to Smashes in game number three. I feel like Smashes is warming up now. The extra fancy touches we're now seeing are amazing. Antman with the pass there, um, able to get it past all the defense, and then Birdsey able to follow up that quickly. That's exactly the right players in the right place to get those kind of goals going, but I love the speed we're seeing now from Smashes. They want to turn up the dial to 11, and they want to smother out Dutchies as fast as they can. That dial should always be turned up in a game of Rocket League, but the shot comes in from Tampori, bounces off the backboard, and Antma is there for the clearance. It is fairly easily cleared now as Tampo is just going to take his time. He's going to be patient, read it well. He's going to go for the air dribble now. XG gets the block, but it is in the center. And Bird has to go up to get the clearance. Fluxy sends it up again. The pass is there. Antma's there to block. Knox's his attempt now. And it is... Oh, look like Bird having a little scrap in the goal with Knox. He's back down now. Antma's going to go up for it. Tampori. He's just going to get a slightly awkward touch there. And you can't be having them little awkward touches to give away that possession. Yeah, I, I think it was mostly an interruption touch where they try to really look at um, stopping the quick counter-attack happening for Smashers. But again, Smashers find their way past the defense and Dutchies Esports is not capitalizing very well because of rotations. They are not following up on the offensive chances that we're seeing from Smashers. When Smashers get a chance to move forward, there's a lot of space for them to run up the field and then find, find a pass and get the goals. So they need someone a bit further back. The third player for, um, for Dutchies needs to step back a little bit and give the rest of his team the space they need to attack, but he needs to be there to defend the counter-attack a bit better. That counter-attack can be deadly as the clear comes in from Tampori. Tampori's going to send it into the middle and Bird with a great save on him. Tampori's going to try and hit it. Unable to do anything with it, though. It's sent back into the middle. Knox bounces it against the ceiling. The pass is there. The shot is off, but it hits against that backboard. And it, that accuracy was just not there for Dutch's eSport right now. That's not what you want, especially in a game that you're already behind. Losing two in a row always feels a bit bad, man. And here again... Good touches, good plays, good extra fanciness from Smashers. Once they are getting the room like they are now, they look so strong because every touch means something. Every touch is a stitch in their offensive weave and it's just working so well for them because it's starting to paint a picture that they are the better offensively skilled team and Dutchies Esports was defensively better the first game, but now they're just throwing away a bit more room and that is being exploited by Smashers. Smashers have to exploit every little opportunity possible to take another goal here. And you, you know, the pressure is on, as always, as Bird and Knox just get a little pinch there. Tampori's gonna hit it towards XG, but XG with a great little block there. Gonna be going back into the center now, but actually he's gonna he's gonna get the edge of it like it was kind of blocked by the middle. A little bit messy in this corner right now. Sent into the middle, but Bird coming off the backboard to clear it fairly easily. The pass comes in from XG on Bird, sends it back to the middle, but Fluss it's just there to get the block again. And they are really well at you know, they're really attempting team plays and they're really attempting to switch it up a little bit. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be working for Dutchies Esports, though, as they just seem a little bit messy and a little bit all over the place. Yeah, the way they are attacking the ball is usually from a very slow uh, position. They are not moving in towards the ball from a rotating position. They're already waiting at their position to hit the ball. And that is just wasting a bit of speed, a bit of chances here. Tempori now trying to do it on his own. He's the, the player I would most reckon is the bit of the slower player here again, waiting, moving, and not moving a little bit too much mostly. And that is just throwing off the rhythm for Dutchies Esports. Yeah, a little bit more methodical of an approach from him as the demo comes in from Knox on Antma. It's going to hit the crossbar, and Knox is there after that demo to just get there at the perfect time and block that. The pass comes in for Flutterez, but Bird is able to clear it as it's a little bit wide. And it seems that Dutchies Esports, they have a little bit of life, but is it too little too late in this game? For this game, it seems like a little bit just way not enough, actually. It's not even a little bit anymore. This game is over and looks dusted and done. Dutchies Esports 
kind of trying to do the right thing, trying to, trying to, uh, to move into some passing plays. But again, they are rotating very short lines and that creates a bit of a clumped up situation. So mis when mistakes happen, they they give away a lot of space in like on the field. If you have your players a bit more spread out, you can worry a little you have to worry a little bit less about the idea of um like giving away the ball because you'll have someone further back to be able to read the situation. But now because they're all clumped up, every time they lose the ball, it is smashers coming in from the other side and quickly stifling any chance and getting goals because of it. The pressure that you have on as as a Rocket League team, you know, I, I have said it time and time again, and this is the one phrase that I use all the time. If you have an onslaught of offense, and if you have a brick wall, you keep hitting that brick doll, it, that brick doll, that brick wall, sorry, it will eventually break and that is what we saw uh, a lot from smashes tonight dutch's esports they did get three shots but they weren't able to capitalize on anything and unfortunately when you're not capitalized on the opportunities that you've got it's just not going to go very well as smashes they are you know as a team they only had four shots but they capitalized on them and slotted them home and they take the victory two nil yeah and the way they started they kept knocking on the door uh, like on that wall was just it was just not effective enough again they were not followed like dutch easy sports was not following up on their knocking well enough and left like left cracks for the little piggies to run out and go and set fire to the lair of the wolf because let's be honest if the piggies can get out do not get eaten the counter attack is brutal because pigs have been prosecuted by wolves for long long now and they've knocked 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 and blown houses down but now pigs rise up and strike back and atman's the first one to fuel that flame straight away 10 seconds into this game as you have probably got the world's best references in the world by the way <laughs> Smashers, they are looking to secure themselves a place in this final as they take a goal 10 seconds in to this game. And Dutch Easy Sport, they have to do something very, very quickly to change it up and to stop this onslaught of offense, which is still here. That pressure is still there. It's such a switch up as well because we saw Dutch Esports always on the offensive, always in the corners, but that's as far as they usually went. And that's why there weren't a lot of shot opportunities and shot chances. But now it is those little extra touches, the little extra fanciness that is working so well here. And it's almost getting them another goal. But for now, the tide of smashers has waned a little bit. Off the line. How did that not go in right there? As Bird's unable to get it past one, Antma gets it past another. Flick comes in, unable to do anything with it off that backboard, though it's not high enough to get it past the third. Essential's just going to get the block now. He's blocking it and passing it to his teammate. The pass comes in. Essential, not too sure what's going on with him. Seems to be having a few issues uh, getting in the way of his own teammates' plays. It looks like he was going for maybe a little back shot. Uh, a little bit of a team play there between Bird and Antma, where they just dinks it off each other to try and take it forward but unfortunately it looks like it, it looks like they're just they're, they're just trying so hard to keep it down there and it is working for them and if you're dutchies esports they're playing really messily they're not playing like and like like it's like a team would do normally on rocket league so for you to try and counter them and to take that from them it's very very difficult to do if you're not used to playing against a team that plays like this True, and as you can see, it's Dusty's Esports having a hard time reading. I, I think reading their their opponent, they're not really able to know what the capabilities are just yet of the players here from Smashers. You're just misreading them every single time. Where they are, what is happening? Touches just not being good enough. Ant Man just being so quick to get to that ball, and nobody able to rotate back because there's just no time to rotate back. And it feels for me that there's no real way that. Uh, Dutchies can come back unless they start reading their opponent a bit better. They start understanding the way they can look for extra touches. And that means they need to get away from the ball a little bit more. Not have two people on the ball as we see Tempori and Knox getting together. That's not what you want. That double commit right there could have been very, very dangerous. Leaving that net completely wide open. That net is still wide open over there. And in comes the plays from Smashers right here. Dutchies Esports. They're really trying. They're trying to stick in here. We are at the halfway point of this game. And if Smashers take this game, 
they will book themselves a place in the final. Bird's going to come off the wall now. He's going to go off the ceiling. He's trying to pass it down to the middle. And oh, what a double commit. And that is really sad to see. But Dutch's eSports capitalizing fairly easily on that on that double commit and that mistake to take that home. And 2-1 in this, in this game to Smashers. The Titanic of Dutchies Esports was sinking, but they were like Jack was throwing a lifeline here by Smashers. No door, just a goal. Is it enough or is he just going to get pushed off and his Rose taking that as well? And this is going to end all sad and boohoo. We don't know. We'll see. But still, it's a lifeline. But is it enough? It may possibly well be. As a dog's going for a bit of a flip reset by looks at that. So I'm probably going to go for the block there. Antma's going to send it downfield, and they are playing very defensively now. The demo comes in from Antma on Flus uh, Res, and Flus Res is going to send that back downfield. It comes off the back of Nox into the center, but Antma is just there to block it fairly easily. Sending it back downfield now, and Nox is there to get a catch fairly easily. The flick comes in from him. He's going to follow that up and pass it to the center, and Flus Res, <gasps> as that works, Antma with a great rotation, able to get there in time, and calm and collectively just stop. That and it does look like the cement of Smashers is being removed a little bit here. As Dutchies Esports, they are getting more chances. Yeah, Dutchies were for now still scraping at that wall, not really getting out the TNT to make those big holes and getting the big goals. But they might still get a chance. They need to stop, like, kind of half passing the ball, half just trying to touch it because they want to touch it. And. Um, especially don't do that. That's that's scary, man. That, that's yeah, that's scary. That is very scary indeed. Forty-five seconds on the clock and smashes. They have they have just made more cement really, and they are back on it. But it is not enough to get them another goal as smashes with another block right there. Sent back downfield now into the Dutchies Esports area. The shot comes in from Bird, but Tampuri with a save. Another shot comes in from Antman. But Fuzzwest is able to block it again, and it is still in that area. The pressure is on, and it is stuck there. But Knox with a fairly good hit there. His fly was a little bit off, though. Not too sure where he thought he was going during that exchange. But Tampuri with another save on Antman's aerial. I don't have to do anything with it, except he's doing backflips, apparently. Sends it back into the center, but the block comes in again. Four seconds on the clock. The counterattack is on. Will that be all she wrote? Yes, it will, and smashes take the victory three to one and move on to the finals of this weekly tournament yeah with that i'm uh, dutch esports kind of like they didn't really disappoint but they did show some glaring weaknesses for me and one of the big weaknesses was they were individually very strong players but their team play is not looking that fly just yet. They're not really looking for the new way of playing Rocket League, the new way other teams are already starting to adapt to. They just seem to be one or two metas behind, basically. Because at the other, other end, we saw Smashers use something that in the beginning didn't go that well, but it's individual skill, moving the ball forward and knowing how to touch the ball very well to get the results that you need. Um, and that that was lacking for Dutchies. They had passing plays, but they were really one-and-done kind of things. Boom the ball to a midfield player, he gets a shot on net. But there's going to be someone back, and they're going to be skilled enough to save it. It's not season like five anymore. We're already in RLCS X. There needs to be more movement. There needs to be more control, and especially more individual play and style coming out of players, because that's the way Rocket League is being played right now. Absolutely. And we do know that I'll do my best have also moved on to the final. So it will be the legend that is Growly, Dave, and LeFox in that final, taking on Dutchies Esports, Flusrez, Tampuri, and Knox. I'm excited for that one. Yeah, same here. That is going to be a very good one. And I think we will be bringing that one as quickly as we can as we go into a break now first i'm still gavastian this is still mikey we will be right back so do not touch that browser see you all right then
Oh, hello and welcome. And as we turn down the track, we are still, we are back. Let's go. I'm still Gavashi and I'm still joined here by the one, the only, the majestic Mikey. Hello and welcome. Absolutely not. We're changing my name now from Mikey to Mickey because I seem to be called that everywhere tonight. But we're getting to this final. And I apologize. I gave you the wrong information earlier. I had the wrong tab open. I'm sorry. Um, we have got, I'll do my best taking on Smashers. I'll do my best consists of Dave, Lifox, and Growly. And the Smashers roster who won the last game was actually Bird, Ant-Man, and Exegi. It's going to be a very, very juicy final this one will be. And hopefully, I'll do my best. We'll do their best. And we'll have a fairly spicy series between them and Smashers. So for me, I want to be the bearer of bad news, I think, for all the fans here from Smashers. I don't think they're going to be doing well. I'll do my best. A very high level players, Lee Fox, like our LCS level player, Growly getting to that point as well. Dave, don't know who that is. Um, and on the other side, yeah, Birdsey is a very good player, but I'm not completely sure if like, the cleanness we saw from I'll do my best is going to be beaten by like... They're good players, but Smashers, I'm not sure. It can go either way, to be fair, as Bird's going to come off the series. It's a very fast start, to be fair to them, as LeFox is going to send it downfield. The block comes in from Egg Sedgy, and Dave is just going to rotate that Bird coming off the wall. Dave able to get the block. Dave's going to be a little bit patient now, but Ant-Man is just there to stop it yet again. The demo comes in from Ant-Man on Growly. And that's, a, that's an F for Growly. The flick comes in, and Little Bird is there to dunk it home. Off the line! How did that not go in right there? He has been very lucky for that wood point. The shot comes in, and Exegi sends it home, and Smashers, Smashers have taken the lead. Smashers want to shut me up quick, it seems, and they're doing their very best. I'm still going to try to be the bearer of bad news for a little bit longer because there's one other thing I kind of saw seeing I'll do my best play is that their first game, their first few minutes, look a bit scrappy at best. They need to get into a series, but if Smashers can come out smashing, then they can bust down the gates before we see I'll do my best get on the way and get rolling the way they want to. Oh, and just as you say that, I'll do my best. Certainly did their best right there. Bird with the blog. Lefox just sends it back into the middle. The demo is there, and Dave slots it home. And just like that, very quickly, we're all even. One minute and ten seconds into the series. Yeah, on the one hand, you have the, ma the majesty that is the birdsy. And on the other side, we have the down and dirty aerial ace of Dave. An insane player in its own right. Both of them kind of being that striker for their team. So let's see which team has the best around this time. It can go either way. But oh, the bird just gets blocked right there. It comes back in and the pass is there. But Exegi is there to get the clearance. And Dave looks a little bit out of position. But he is there to get that block. Send it back into the middle. The pass is there for the Fox. The Fox gets the shot off. And Ant-Man is just there to get that fairly easy block. Growly sends it back into the middle again, and the pressure is on. Yeah, if I, like, I can start identifying, and it was a little bit easier for me for I, to do it for I'll, I'll Do My Best, but kind of the roles the character, the uh, the players are playing here. Lee Fox is really that third, that more reliable anchor of a player, where Growly is the very chaotic offensive-defensive mind that is just creating a lot of space for his team. And Dave is more of that full offense, like full strength stat character that wants to just go and smash and doing that very well. But Growly, no slouch himself and trying it here. Although he missed it. <laughs> Unlucky for Growly, the little miss there. As Dave is going to be there to block it. He's going to edge. He's going to ground dribble this even. Trying to do it really well. Growly with a great block there. Stopping Bird from doing anything. The pass is there, but nobody is there to finish it. And Ant Man with a clear. Little Fox is going to send it into the middle, tries to get the shot off, but Exegi is just there to get the block. It is coming back downfield now as Dave props it up. It comes back off the backboard. And now we're just being a little bit more patient, a little bit more methodical. And 1 minute 55 on the clock. Who have you got taking this game? You just notice, I, I don't have anyone taking this game just yet, because from both teams we see kind of the idea of what they want to do, the kind of play style they want to 
exhibit, but also that they respect the heck out of their opponents. Both both teams taking a step back, knowing that either team can come out strong, and it's now looking to shut them down if you can. But if you can't, even Growly can hit that shot, apparently. Yeah, Growly with a great shot there. A little pass comes in from LaFox, and Dave does really well to get out of the way of that. And that is on. Fortunate for the defender, you really think that you'd have been able to get that, but unfortunately unable to do so, and I'll do my best. They have taken the lead at 1 minute 33 on the clock, and they are in the driver's seat in this game. It's a little bit of an air, an air 50 comes in right there. It's going to be sent to the middle by Ant-Man, and it is just way too fast for anybody to do anything about it. And as I say that, Bertie is able to slot it home, and we're even yet again. What yeah. a game. Bertie looking at Ronaki for the kind of playstyle chances that you can get. Quick passes across the goal. If you are ready on the other side of that goal, you get a couple of very good chances. You need to trust your teammates that they are rotating back when you call moving forward there because it's usually the third man taking that position. But it worked very well, and now it's on them to see if they can extend that lead and finally get that lead, or if it's going to be I'll do my best finding holes in the defense once again. The holes in the defense are there and the, the sh shot comes in off the back but the demo comes in from growly on bird is taking him out of the equation and dave with the clearance Antman's gonna send it back downfield the fox is just there to block it growly is gonna send it and look like it looked like a pass looked like a shot not too sure which but it does not go either way and it's just stuck messily in this corner right now as everybody is just trying to get possession growly with the flick right there Antman is able to stop it and bounce it against that wall Sends it downfield as Birdie eats it yet again. The demo comes in from Ant-Man on Dave to remove one of the defenders from the situation. The pass comes into the middle and Exegi, Exegi tries to go for the bounce off the backboard, but the block is there. 20 seconds on the clock, and it looks like if they don't relieve the pressure fairly quickly, we could be going to an overtime. Yeah. Never mind. I I was almost going to say we saw a kind of world-class defense coming out of I'll do my best. But before I even got to say it, they shut that down by missing that one. Or was that? I think that was a bump. Crowley would have probably had that one. We got bumped away by the, by the attacker. That is... That's almost new level bumps and demos we got there. Very good. And that is what you get for such individually skilled players on the side of Smashers. Three seconds on the clock, and it is just a formality at this point. And I'll do my best. Their best wasn't good enough, and Smashers take game number one in this best of five series in this final. Yeah, and I was a bit surprised uh, to see it because, like, for me, I'll do my best. The players are very strong, but you can just notice their rotation and the way they're playing sometimes a little bit messy. They like to overcut each other. A little bit too much. I think um, we heard it that Dave is like an insane scorer. Well, we heard that from the previous casters who, who got to cast. I'll do my best. But he's not really getting the chance these games to really get those shots because on Smasher's team, they are shutting down aerial hits and aerial plays very quickly. So there's no time for that. And then it needs to be a bit of an adjustment by the team to find a new way to get more goals because you cannot rely on your main scorer to really do it. You need to like offload it to someone else. And I think both Growly and Lee Fox also have the ability or at least the ability to move up and create better chances. But they need to start doing that and not hoping that a single attack gets them past the defense and into the goal. You have to do that, and you have to do that fairly quickly, as we are just going to get ready now for game number two. And there is a poll in the chat. So who is going to we the RC Weekly 2 champions? Will it be I'll do my best, or will it be Smashers as we are going to get this game underway? Yeah, let's get this ready to rumble. And I'm really wondering how this is going to end. Because at the end of the day, it's going to be looking like Smashers are extremely, extremely strong right now. You said that they needed to be great. And you said you didn't want to spoil the party for Smashers. And the party is going all night at this rate. Smashers 5 seconds into the game it taking the lead off the kickoff really well there and that kickoff comes in with dave hit hitting it downfield antman's gonna block that the fox is gonna send it right back downfield and sechi is still there to get the block 
Growly is going to go up for an air dribble. He's going to go for the flip reset. He's going to go for the flick. And the save comes in from Amman, just able to prop it up against the backboard to prevent the goal. But the pressure is on, and it's sent back down by Growly. It is in the center. Is anybody there to finish it? Nobody was there to finish it. The shot comes in. The pass was there. And Ant-Man slots it home and smashes a 2-0 up. Yep, Smash is looking as strong as ever. And you can see the defense breaking out. You can see that this is a bit of a pickup team. Uh, like, I'll do my best definitely seems like that pickup team kind of style where they have individually strong players, but they're just waiting for the right mistakes to happen from the defense of the opponents. And when that doesn't happen, a pickup team is going to struggle because they do not have the same like resources to uh, have different attack patterns, learn how to really adjust to a kind of defense and you're noticing that that's kind of the weakness here that is the weakness the pass comes in and a great pass that was and ant-man is there to get that save what a pass that was just bouncing it off the ceiling send it in to the center the shot comes in and ant-man is there to block it and it, the pressure is still on unable to clear it it's in the center of the field at the moment as I said she just gets the block but demo comes in from Rowley on, but the block comes in from Exegi to stop it being cleared, but it does eventually get cleared anyway, and Ant-Man is still there. Ant-Man's putting in some work in this game. He's going to go for it, but Exegi is going to take that. It like a little fake came in from him there. And Dave is going to get the flick. The demo comes in. A demo comes oh. in again. Two defenders down, and it's still not gone in that net. That was supposed to be a shot and not a demo, but the little extra touch made sure that that didn't go into the net. They want to keep the goal clean. Smashers un like still able to keep it that way, but for now, I'll do my best. Is really, really trying to get an attack on the way. I'll do my best. They're certainly trying their best right now and are trying to get back into this game. And the pressure is on 2 minutes 50. And I've said it before, you break down the wall, it eventually be there. But the, sh the pass comes in. And the clearance is there. Dave sends it back into the middle. Groundly bounces it. But Exegi with the log. And it ooh, gets bounced against the Fox right there. And the clearance is there yet again. Bird is going to bounce it downfield. Now the attack is on yet again. It's a little bit too high for anybody to do anything with it. And Dave is going to get the clearance. Two minutes, 25 on the clock. What do I'll do my best need to do right now to get back in this? Um, I'll do my best. Mostly need to stop double committing or getting their players a little bit close to each other. Dave and Growly both really want to make this happen. Really want to show what they can do. And it's just causing a lot of, like clumping up there's not a great spacing here if you throw a grenade in between the players all of them are dead and in any shooter game you know you're not doing your spacing right if that can happen and you can see it's happening here but oh my lord that chance that could go in dave stops it again spacing the curse of i'll do my best dave was just at the wrong place at the wrong time as we've seen multiple times throughout this series so far as a, oh Dave getting a very dodgy touch there. The demo attempt comes in, but Growly is very wise to avoid that. The Fox gets the block. Dave is going to hit it into the center, and it hits the top, and he's still not there. It's bounced off the post, and it's cleared. How has that not gone in? Well, normally, I'll do my best gets a lot more chances, and they can miss one or two of them. They have that cushion, but this time, they do not. So any one of those crucial touches that should have gone in, they had, I think, two or three very good chances, but now it's a third goal for Smashers, and I'll do my best is, well, like, there isn't a leak in this boat. There's a hole, and they are taking in seawater. You cannot keep that ship afloat if it keeps on sinking and it is sinking more and more as we see this game progress 3-0 is the scoreline to smashes at this point and it isn't for a lack of effort it isn't for a lack of chances they've just been unable to capitalize on them chances and in a game of rocket league you have to be able to capitalize on your chances otherwise it's not going to happen oh it was in the net and it still didn't go in 
XG with a master save. They're trying everything. They're throwing. I, I can see a couple of kitchen sinks in here as well. Trying it again. Can they finally get it in? It's still a post says no. This postcard is saying that you are not allowed in there. I am sorry. You are trespassing. I'll do my best. And you need to get out. What a game of twists and turns this has been. I'll do my best. Has been unable to do anything with it thus far. The Fox gets the clear. Antman's going to send it back downfield. The pass is there for Exegi. Exegi's going to just bump it up a little bit. Growly's going to get the clearance. Two seconds on the clock, and they are just going to want this game over at this point. And that will be it as Smashers gets 2 0 up in this series. They are on match point. They're on series points. And. That was absolutely messy from I'll Do My Best. I mean, let's just say it's not even series points. It is grand finals points. It's 30 euros points. They need to get one more and they're done. And I'll do my best. We'll notice that it was not enough. They are trying so well. I have seen, like, on... Um, on Twitter, I, I I follow most of these uh, the, these players, at least a a decent amount of them, and I notice both from Lee Fox and Rowley, they're really looking for a team, looking for a way to make things work, looking for any chance to get back into the RLCS swing of it, and they are they're not having having a great chances, and I love the fact that they are trying it together like this now. But as you notice that getting a pickup team and just going for it sometimes just doesn't work well enough, and you need to have a bit more in there. Rotations right now for them are not clean enough. They need to start looking at better ways to get their one, two, three going. Because if one's going for the ball, two and three are too close to each other. They are not giving each other space. So spread out a bit more, get that spacing in there. And from there, you can definitely start start a comeback because you, you've shown skills, you've shown options for it. It's just, it hasn't really worked. And then the last thing is hit the ball in the, ne in the net, not on the post, in the net. On the post. Not on the post. In the net. Not on the post. I'll do my best. Had 11 <laughs> shots last game. They are going to need to come back fighting if they want to complete a reverse sweep and take home the prize money and secure themselves the victory in this tournament. 44 seconds and 4 minutes. Oof, this is going to be a good game. Oh, it's going to be a very, very good game. Overall, again, I'll do my best. I'm, I'm still not counting them out. I think they have a lot of tricks up their sleeves that when they get a chance to show it, they will be coming, they'll be becoming so, so strong. But for now, they need to make sure to not make any mistakes, get into the flow of things, and from there, look for like a single attack to get a goal with it. And again, not hit the post would be very, very handy. Great talk right there. Not hitting the post is needed, but the demo comes in from Dave on Exegi and it's just being sent back downfield now. Ant-Man is there to try and follow it up, unable to do anything with it. Birdie props it up. Is he going to go for it? Unable to unable to put that away and it's just sent back down now. Growly is going to capitalize on it, but Bird is in the perfect position on that wall to stop that counter attack. As Dave sends it towards the center, Bird is there to catch it and how vital is stopping that counter attack like that i think extremely vital you don't want to give up any chance of a good goal and i think what is plaguing i'll do my best is probably a communication issue as well <gasps> i mean also just hitting the net is still it's still not something that is in there they're doing their best i believe them but their best is not good enough for now oh my lord what a good chance here Oh, almost goes in. What a beautiful attack there. Small things for Smashers just look so big. But the woodwork helping I'll do my best for once. But it's still not enough because the pass comes in from Bird and Exegi slots it home. And Smashers, with three minutes on the clock, they look well on their way to taking this tournament. Yeah, I think both teams at the end of the day look a bit rough. They look a bit... They look like a team with potential. They just need to clean up their their game plan a little bit. They need to start adjusting to what each other are doing a little bit better. And from there, they could become very good contenders. Of course, they got to the RC Weekly this week, but defending champions MCOM Black and, and Kensho are both not here. 
so you haven't beaten the best Europe has to offer yet, but you are looking at least to take this week and put your name on the record books as some of the best bubble team players in the scene. And from there, hopefully they can start moving on and getting a bit more results here because this, this for now, for Smashers, looks great. Yeah, I would be very interested to see the winner of last week's tournament, Amcom Black, taking on the winner of this week's tournament, which looks to be Smashes, but let's not count them out yet, as Growly is going on the offense, but the block comes in from Ant-Man, and Ant-Man with the clearance, and Ant-Man with the demo on Lil Fox, and it is all to play for. The flick comes in from Birdie, a great little block, a great little flick from him sending that downfield. And Growly just catches it again. Antman's going to go for the pass into the center, unable to do anything with it. And it is back and forth at the moment. Just a little just a little tap against the wall. And Stuck is going to go for a flick again here, does Dave, but still unable to do it. And it does seem that the lack of goals has been disastrous for Dave throughout this series. Yeah, the, the goals just saying... I can't let you do that, Dave. And just every time stopping it. This is, once again, a great odyssey. But this time, I'll do my best. Not successful yet. They still have some time. Chances are being created. But the defense, the offense falls flat every once in a while because their rotation to midfield is just not there every single time. So they, they give up some room. And that's in those little moments, that's where smashers thrive. Absolutely. Ant-Man gets a great save there in the right place at the right time. Sent back downfield by Exedry. And the counter-attack is on. The pass is there. And he goes for a block. But it looked like a little bit of miscommunication there on the Smashers roster. Which resulted in... Well, nothing. <laughs> Did not result in a goal. And it results in the clearance. And the counter-attack's on as Birdie gets the block. The Fox is going to send it back to the middle. It's going to bounce off the backboard. Dave is going to go for it. And they've still not been able to get that. Just give them one. <laughs> they are not going to get even one for now. Such a defensive heroic act. Flying in the air. They're feathering your boost to get the block at the last second from the attacking player. It is so much work to keep. I'll do my best out. But not just are they doing their best. They are doing better than that. Smashers looking to take this one. Last few seconds. Still a chance here for Dave. Gets stopped. Still up in the air. So anyone can go for it. Growly wanting to take it slow. Gets blocked down. Smash drop it and they take it they take the finals in a sweep absolutely disastrous for dave and co on the i'll do my best roster and let me tell you if i had as many shots as this team has had in these past two games and they didn't go in i would be crying as much as i cried to Grey's anatomy because that was dramatic and it smashes with an insane game they played extremely well they kept their composure both teams played really well but I'll do my best need to work on that finishing. Because if you don't have that finishing, it's not going to go well. And, you know, I'll do my best. They played really, really well. The chances were there. We said it before, 11 shots in the last game. Six shots in this one. And not one goal. But, ladies and gentlemen, Smashers will take cup number two. And Smashers are your Rocket Core Weekly 2 champions. Yeah, taking home that 30, 30 euros. Um, overall, I think they might have to share that price pool with the goal. Uh, <laughs> at least like 50-50. Like the goal takes 15 and uh, the rest of the players can take five each because obvious there was... There was a there it was not really luck. I mean, you can you notice that precision was not there for I'll do my best. Their shots were on target ish most of the time and even the goals that did go in because i saw a shot from growly going very close to um to a goal to a goalie who just th flew too far into the goal to really save the ball but it's those kind of things like precision in the moment was kind of missing and if you cannot perform on like on a high enough level ever, consistently you're gonna run into teams that are just gonna be con a little bit more consistent and there was this wall for I'll do my best and they just couldn't get past it if you're the I'll, if you're the I'll do my best roster now you came you know you, you came second you did really well you had a great series what do you have to do to ensure that the next time when they when you know if they come back to next week's tournament 
that they can actually turn around and take the entire thing. I mean, not sure. I'm not sure if they can. You never know what kind of other teams might show up next week. That's always a thing. You don't know what's going to show up next week and how well other teams are playing. But for now, I mean, getting to the finals is always a good thing, I think. Yeah, I would agree with you there. I think getting to the finals shows how much passion you've got. It shows how good you are. And it shows how hard you work to get there. It is not an easy thing to do. So I'll do my best. They should really take away from this that they did do their best. They performed really well. Just some small things to work on. Maybe a bit more communication. Maybe a bit of finishing, you know, as a team and breaking up play a little bit more. But a great series to cast. And a huge shout out to you over there, sir. Not only are you casting, but you're also producing the stream. Absolutely legendary. I could not do that. Uh, I've had some practice in the past. And I mean, when duty calls, you step up and make sure that things happen. So that's, uh, it's a... Uh... I, it, it does do my head in a little bit to have to think of all the different things I got to say. There were a couple of mistakes here during the stream. I was like, uh oh, hope nobody notices. I think it'll be fine. I think I got away with it. Did I? I mentioned the war once, but I think I got away with it. I think you got away with it. I didn't notice. But thank you so much for producing the, the cast. Thank you for Challenger Mode for partnering, sponsoring, providing that platform. And thank you to everybody in chat for hanging out with us and being absolutely legendary. And thank you for having me on to cast my second week at Rocket Court. It has been absolutely phenomenal. And it's always a pleasure to cast with you, sir. Yeah, and it's always a pleasure to cast with you. So everybody, if you haven't already, if you want to like both enjoy uh, good good shout outs to good organizations and stuff like that and just little mental breakdowns late at night, make sure to follow uh, Mikey on uh, on on Twitter. And it's It's lovely. Really attacked i mean that is fair but with that with that attack i might have started a new war the old one's done we'll start a new one later everybody thank you all so much for watching i hope you all feel well take care of yourself and of course a big shout out to people behind the scenes blitz league and everybody else and of course tofu elliot and astral for casting as well and yeah like i said take care of yourself take care of others if you can and most of all, have a good night and see you all again next week for another RC Weekly.